tonight. We report on changes to graduation requirements in Moses Lake and the Cowboy Breakfast kicks off Fair Week. What's happening in sports, Bob? Well, Amber, the River Dogs claim the Babe Ruth World Series title and the Sounders in Orlando City mix it up on the pitch. Here's a quick peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hello everyone, for today, sunny and smoky across the area with seasonably warm temperatures will be warming up then cooling down. I have all your details just ahead with your extended forecast. I'm Amber Jinks and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Moses Lake High School students no longer have to complete a senior project in order to graduate. The Moses Lake School District Board of Directors voted unanimously to change the policy on graduation requirements. Starting this fall, seniors can work on transitioning from high school into either a college or vocational school through a personal pathway in the new high school and beyond plan. It can be customized to each student's goals. Recently approved state legislation increases the required number of fine arts and foreign language credits and decreases the amount of health and fitness, career and technical education, and elective credits needed for graduation. Students taking career tech education courses can have them be applied as two-for-one credit equivalencies, allowing them to take classes to meet either graduation requirements during the same semester. The Grant County Fair Week officially kicked off with the annual Cowboy Breakfast in downtown Moses Lake. Reporter Joe Utter was there and has the story. Cowboys and cowgirls of all ages were up bright and early Friday morning for the annual Cowboy Breakfast in downtown Moses Lake. A few hundred pancakes and even more eggs were cooked up as hundreds of people filtered through St. Cayuse Square. The annual event, which has taken place in Moses Lake for at least 30 years, is hosted by the Kiwanis Club of Moses Lake. Proceeds raised during the breakfast help the Kiwanis Club provide scholarships for Moses Lake students and fund other youth programs. Along with breakfast, children had the chance to participate in the Pee Wee Stampede with barrel racing, dummy roping, and bronc riding on stick horses, with a chance to win a trophy and other prizes. Five-year-old Colt Staples was successful in both his dummy roping attempts and came away with the trophy. The little ones had some help for the barrel racing from Moses Lake Roundup Queen Katie Duncan and Last Stand Rodeo Queen Tammy Dines out of Cooley City. The Cowboy Breakfast serves as the traditional kickoff event for the Grant County Fair, which begins on Tuesday. This is Joe Utter for i Fiber One News. A Moses Lake man reportedly threatened a FedEx driver with a hammer after blocking him in the parking lot. Prosecutors charged William Verisco, a 27-year-old man in Grant County Superior Court, with assault in the second degree and harassment. The victim finished making a delivery to Fairchild Cinemas on August 8th and was trying to exit the parking lot into Block Street when a car black car blocked the exit. When the FedEx driver attempted to go around the car, Verisco allegedly moved to block him. When the FedEx driver got out of his truck, Verisco did the same and was carrying a claw hammer. He reportedly walked towards the other driver yelling, demanding his name and threatening to break his knees. Verisco allegedly swung the hammer at the FedEx driver twice. The driver was able to avoid the swings. Comic books and superheroes hit Moses Lake as the library hosts its first Comic Com event recently. Reporter Jeff Chu was there and has the story. It took some supernatural strength and power to withstand the hot and smoky weather conditions, but that wasn't a problem for more than 150 superheroes and comic book fans last week. Moses Lake Library's first Comic Con or Comic Convention drew kids of all ages who dressed as their favorite superheroes, played games, and watched the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. The first event of its kind in Moses Lake took place outside the library on Fifth Avenue at Civic Park. The fun was connected to the library's main mission, reading. Winner of the kids' costume contest was nine-year-old Audrey Tran. Allison Stewart, children's librarian at Moses Lake Library, was happy with the turnout. I think it was fantastic. We were a little nervous with the weather being smoky and really hot, but it was a great turnout. 
Stewart, who helped organize the event, said with such success this year, Comic-Con is likely to return next year with additional superpowers. It will go along with our summer reading theme, um, so we're not quite sure what that is yet, but they'll plan something fun. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber one News. <laughs> now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips.co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be back right after this. My name is Kat Sanderson, Managing Broker for Pillar Rock Realty Group. We love the Columbia Basin because it's our home and we want to give back to our community by kicking off our Pay It Forward campaign. If you buy or list with us, we will donate 1% of our total proceeds to a local charity of your choice and in your name. Call us today at 754-4444 or visit PillarRockRealty.com because we are your local real estate experts. Now for your iFiber One News Weather Center forecast. Hello everyone, I'm Cristina Sanchez with your local weather segment brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service the car. We're still under a red flag warning throughout the night since we do have strong wind gusts, wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour, maybe even stronger. And this is due to a cold front that has already moved across the area. And this is why we have been under a blowing dust advisory that will continue throughout the evening. A cold front has already moved into the northwest. This is bringing a drop in temperatures and also those gusty winds throughout the overnight hours. For Saturday, for us here in Ephraida, I do expect the winds to be up to 10 miles an hour. Within the past 24 hours, we did start off the day in the low 70s for us here in Ephraida. The average low is 60 degrees, so we're still well above normal for this time of year. Highs today closer to the average high, which is in the upper 80s, and the record high temperature for this date was set back in 04, and the record high was 103. Our sunset at a 12 for tonight. For you in Moses Lake, you did start off the day in the upper 60s. Your average low temperature is in the mid 50s and highs right around that average high temperature, which is in the upper 80s. And your record high temperature for this date was set back in 1992 and the record high was 102. Those high temperatures that we had yesterday. Now for us here in Ephrata, currently we're right around the mid 80s. We still have those westerly winds sustained winds between 20 to 30 miles an hour, wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour, and we'll continue to have those strong wind gusts throughout the overnight hours as this cold front already moves out of the area, and it's also bringing a chance of strong showers and thunderstorms. Some may become severe west of our Columbia Basin, but as we go into Saturday, that's all going to move out of the area as the cold front moves into the northeastern portions of the state, and right behind it, there will be much cooler air mass and also dry conditions across the area for us here within our Columbia Basin for Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. I do expect to have plenty of sunshine and improving conditions also along the coast throughout throughout the overnight hour, hours as that cold front moves into the northeastern portions of our state. As we take a look at the high temperatures for this Saturday, right around the mid-70s in Seattle, Yakima Valley, mid-80s, plenty of sunshine. And look at that in the northwest, still feel that drop in temperatures with high temperatures right around the upper 70s, plenty of sunshine. And let's take a quick closer view within our area. Once again, we'll feel the cool down in temperatures for tomorrow, our high temperature right around the low 80s with plenty of sunshine for us here in Ephrata and for you in rural city highs will be right around the mid 80s within the next seven days i do expect the highs to be right around the low to mid 80s for this weekend nice weather pattern dry conditions for us then highs for tuesday will be in the low 90s to save some energy i've used einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you they will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. With the money we save on our Grant PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. 
River Dogs are the 2015 Senior Babe Ruth World Series champion. Spencer Vela's RBI single in the top of the six broke a scoreless tie, and the River Dogs went on to beat Alabama 3-0. It's the first national crown for the team since the Dogs won it all in 1998. The River Dogs breezed through pool play with a 4-0 record. The Dogs then turned back Fairfax, Virginia, 11-5 in semifinal round action. The win put them against the Alabama Raw Dogs, who are looking to take home championship hardware for the third straight year and the fifth time in the past six years. Goose Eggs dotted the scoreboard through five innings of play. Back-to-back -back singles in the top of the six set the table for Vela's game-winning RBI. Cameron Walker's sack fly scored Tristan Parton from third, and the Dogs went up 2-0. Josh Kallstrom doubled off the center field wall to lead off the seventh for the River Dogs. Caden Murphy singled him home with two outs to give the boys from the basin a bit more breathing room. Vela and Walker were named co-most valuable players of the game. Walker was the MVP of the tournament. He, along with Vela, Murphy, Kallstrom, and Parton, were named to the All-World Series team. Obafemi Martin scored twice. Nelson Valdez added a goal in his debut, and Tomas inserted the dagger, and the Sounders rolled past Orlando City 4-0. It was just the second win in 10 league matches for Seattle FC, who moves to 11-12-2 on the season. Martin's first goal put the Sounders up 1-0 17 minutes into the fuss. His second goal found the back of the net 45 minutes later. Martin's had an opportunity for the hat trick, but showed a little bit of rust after he missed an early penalty kick. Seattle gets a big lift with the return of Martins, who had been out for two months. The team is 9-3-0 with Martins in the lineup and 2-9-2 without him. Well, the Mariners outlasted the Red Sox 10-8 in extra innings to salvage a win in their three-game series in Boston. But before you get all giddy about the win, bear in mind the M's blew a seven-run lead and then escaped with the victory a day after Boston hung 22 runs on the team. The Red Sox tied it, the game that is in the bottom of the ninth on a single by Travis Shaw. Boston had a chance to win it, but Big Poppy was out at the plate trying to score from second on the play. Mike Zanino pounded out a bases-loaded two-run single in the top of the 12th, and the M's held on for the win. The Mariners open a three-game series in Texas tonight. We'll be back after this commercial break. For 12 years, Euphratis hosted the best free music festival in Washington. This year was no exception with performers like Austin Jenks. And you're going to meet him and other headliners like Greg Raleigh, founding member of Santana and Journey. Welcome to iFiber One's Inside Look at Basin Summer Sounds. She says she talks to angels. Our spotlight story tonight is about Japanese students taking part in the Moses Lake Yonezawa Sister City Exchange Program and their experience in Grant County. Reporter Jeff Chu has a story. Grant County on it. Three Yonezawa Japan students learned about local government and business Friday during tours of the Grant County Courthouse and I Fiber Communications offices and news studio in Efreda. The Yonezawa students visit as part of the 34-year-old Moses Lake Yonezawa Sister City Exchange Program. The Japanese students visited here about a week after Moses Lake Christian Academy seniors Kasaya McCune, Anna Yarbrough, and Danielle Sandberg traveled to Yonezawa. The Moses Lake students and their parents who hosted the Yonezawa students at their Moses Lake homes joined the three Yonezawa students on the tour. Yuki Castle, a Moses Lake resident who was born in Japan, served as the Japanese visitor's interpreter. The students and their chaperone were hosted at Moses Lake City Hall and Police Department before they came to Afreda. They wrapped up their Friday tour at Grand Coulee Dam. Haruki Yumanopo, one of the Japanese exchange students, said she was having fun learning about America. I played volleyball. Yes, I saw best favorite. Yeah. 
The Moses Lake students who visited Yanazawa talked about their experience. I liked being able to visit with my Japanese family and the students that we met there. Get to learn a little bit like what they like to do and how different and similar we are. We went to a drum concert and they're like these really big drums and they hit them with sticks and it was really cool. Uh, we did Mount Tengendai. It's like an hour and a half away from Yanazawa, somewhere around there. Um, but we went up the mountain to about 6,000 feet elevation using ski lifts um, and we hiked to about almost 7,000 feet. It's so green and lush there um, and being used to Moses Lake, it's really dry and brown. The Anazawa contingent was greeted at the courthouse by Grant County Commissioner Carol Ann Schwartz. Chief Executive Officer Kelly Ryan at iFiber Communications hosted the group there. Emily Bronward, who chaperoned the Moses Lake students on their visit to Japan, shared what stood out to her. The cultures are very, very different between Japan and, and, and America, and so there's differences like um, the girls were surprised that, um, that Americans can go out to a rifle range and shoot guns, and so when they were here, um, the, the Moses Lake police were brought out. They, it was the first time ever seeing a rifle or a bigger gun or any type of gun, really. The Japanese so students were right. fascinated with Grant County Sheriff Tom Jones's office, including pins and a Colt rifle exhibited behind his desk. The Anazawa Exchange students were to visit Seattle on Monday to see the Seattle Mariners Safeco Field and the Space Needle, among other sites. They travel to Vancouver, British Columbia on Tuesday, where they are expected to fly back to Yanazawa. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Quincy Foods, LLC, a subsidiary of Norpac Foods, is seeking motivated individuals to fill the positions of general laborer for their corn harvest season. They have full-time seasonal openings, must be 18 years old and older, willing to work swing shift, great people to work for in a challenging food processing environment. Apply at 222 Columbia Way in Quincy between 8 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday or online through WorkSource. Quincy Foods is an equal opportunity employer. Grant County potato farmers are being advised that silid population in the area is increasing. Silids are insects which feed on potato leaves and are being seen in rapidly growing numbers across the Pacific Northwest. According to Washington State University Regional Vegetable Specialist Carrie Wolub, university researchers found the pests on 79% of field samples throughout the lower Columbia Basin, up from 60% the week before and 50% the week before that. Wolub said silids are an issue because they can carry and transmit zebra chip disease, which can be potentially devastating to crops. Infected potatoes develop brown lines, which resemble zebra stripes, and are most apparent when fried. The striped sections burn and caramelize easily, leaving a bitter flavor. There are no known health risks for anyone who consumes infected potatoes, but they can be made unusable for snacks like chips or french fries. Registration is open for families looking to enroll students in the Wilson Creek School District. All students are required to submit paperwork to the district office prior to the start of the school year on September 1st. The paperwork is provided on the school district's website and includes the internet user agreement, handbook agreement, student media release, and more. New students must complete enrollment and health information forms and submit requirements from student records and certificate of immunization status, which can be obtained from the student's previous school. All documents are available on the district's webpage, www.wilsoncreek.org. A Grand Coulee man allegedly tried to break into a home and car, claiming he was looking for a place to sleep. Prosecutors charged Corey Campbell, a 32-year-old man in Grant County Superior Court, with attempted residential burglary, two counts of assault, and attempted vehicle prowling. Campbell reportedly went to a home on Grand Avenue in Electric City and tried to open the door. The victim stated the noise of the handle moving made her dog start barking. She allegedly saw Campbell try to kick in a door to her garage. The victim reportedly yelled at him and he said he was looking for Josh and asked to sleep in the victim's car. The victim allegedly told Campbell to leave several times before he left. Officers found Campbell outside the Electric City post office. When they arrested him, he allegedly began to struggle with officers, kicked one officer, and pinched another. In Northwest News, 
Wildfires continue to wreak havoc in and around Chelan, where up to 75 homes have burned down, and the National Guard was called in to help battle the spreading flames. Officials say the fires could continue to burn for weeks. The fire was sparked by lightning last week, and shifting winds are making it more challenging for crews to fight. Five of the six fires burning in the area are 0% contained and have burned more than 100,000 acres. Windy and hot conditions are making dry areas even worse. About 600 homes remain without power, and more than 2,000 people are, un are under evacuation orders. Large wildfires continue to burn across the Northwest as firefighters battles one of the worst fire seasons on record. For CNN, Andrew Spencer has the story. Picking through the rubble, former homeowners try to salvage what they can. It's pretty unimaginable. There's no preparing for this. Officials say lightning sparked four fires around Chelan, Washington, a town of about 4,000 people. The flames spread quickly. I felt like Pierce Brosnan in Dante's Peak. I was literally outrunning flames at 60 miles an hour. Officials issued orders to evacuate for as many as 1,500 homes. Flames destroyed another 100. It was a panic zone, but still, you know, we had enough time. Uh, People coming up and just telling us, hey, man, it's heading your way. Get out. Don't act like you can stay. The biggest fire by far is burning in the southwest corner of Idaho. The Soda Fire has burned more than 283,000 acres, 442 square miles, an area larger than New York City or San Diego. Between that fire and the Lawyer Complex Fire in northwestern Idaho, more than 1,600 people are working to get the flames under control. Crews continue to work in eastern Oregon as well to figure out how many homes and outbuildings have been destroyed. The Canyon Creek Complex fire has burned more than 34,000 acres. And of course, all over drought-stricken California, wildfires continue to burn as well. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. That's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching and we'll see you again tomorrow.